Welcome and thank you for joining us today for the National Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. My name is Agent 3 Nunez and I will serve as the Master of Ceremony to, for today's event. I would like for you to welcome our command leadership, Colonel Barr, Command Master Chief Swanson, Captain Wilkers, Captain Fancher, and the staff of the Walter Reed team for attending today's ceremony. In honor of National Hispanic Heritage Month, this year's theme is honoring the past and securing the future. Please rise for invocation of Lieutenant Melendez. Let us pray. Amante glorioso Dios, loving and gracious God, we gather in your presence this, this, this morning to celebrate our rich Hispanic heritage and traditions. Today we remember the contributions of all the Latino Americans from all over the world and their shared history, culture, and accomplishments within our country. We are thankful because during the month of September and October, we commemorated the influence of our Hispanic families to the American society at large since the 1960s. We thank you, God, for our wondrous diversity in our cultures, traditions, languages, for all the ways we celebrate our humanity and praise your divinity. Oramos por el enriquecimiento de nuestras mentes, cuerpos y espíritus al celebrar juntos en este hermoso día. Enrich our minds, body, and spirits, we pray, as we celebrate together on this beautiful day. Amen. Thank you, Lieutenant Melendez. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The observance recognizes National His Hispanic Heritage Month as established by the Title 36 U.S. Code Section 126 Pu Public Law 100 through 402. Hispanic Heritage Month is observed from 15 September to 15 October of each year. The observance is celebrated through the time frame due to many significant events for fi various Hispanic communities which fall be between the observance period. Hispanics have had a profound and positive influence for these countries through the strong commitment and family faith, hard work, and service. They have enhanced and shaped our nation's character and century-old traditions that reflect the multicultural and multi-ethnic customs of this community. I'd like to invite Colonel Barr, Walter Reed National Military Medical Centers, for his opening remarks. So thank you, HM3 Nunez. Uh, good afternoon, Team Walter Reed Bethesda, and uh, thank you for joining us today for our continued celebration of National Hispanic Heritage Month. I can think of no other time in my 23 year career where it has been more important to acknowledge, inform, and celebrate the diversity of our nation and our military than right now. We are the most culturally diverse country on the planet, and it is that variety of wisdom, experience, innovation, and culture coupled with our inherent freedoms that makes us the greatest nation in the world. The 6,300 individuals that comprise the staff of Walter Reed National Military Medical Center come from every culture, gender, religion, identity, and ability to form one team, united in a common mission of service to patients, families, and each other, to provide the highest quality, safest health care available through clinical, academic, research, and administrative domains. Each member of our team is equally important to that mission and must be acknowledged, respected, and valued for their contributions. But recognizing diversity is not enough. We must continue our work towards complete inclusion of our diverse workforce in the opportunities afforded by our great nation, government, and military. Today, we continue our celebration of National Hispanic Heritage Month. Many of you may know that I'm a proud Texan and was born and raised in San Antonio. Most Texans are not shy about letting others know where they're from or why you should join us. Though my family heritage is not Hispanic, much of who I am today as a person and an officer was highly influenced by the great Hispanic culture of my home state and hometown. 
From the fight for Texas independence, to the struggle for equal opportunity, to the music, food, traditions, language, and work ethic, Hispanic culture made Texas what it is and made me a better person, husband, father, officer, and leader. For that, I am extremely grateful and both proud and humbled to stand before you today. I would like to thank the Multicultural Committee for organizing today's event and specifically thank HM3 Nunez, Chaplain Melendez, a wonderful uh, opening uh, uh, prayer there, uh, Major Gandia and uh, Captain Acosta who both speak to us today. Uh, thank you all for your participation. It is through the purposeful listening of each other's stories and with open minds that we gain greater knowledge of what it means to be Americans and through that understanding that we build a stronger nation. Thank you. I would like to, for you to introduce Captain Ruben Acosta, Director of, a Director of Education, Training and Research. Good afternoon, Colonel Barr, Captain Welkers, Colonel Jefferson, and staff. I would like to thank the Walter Reed Multicultural Committee, and especially the President HM1 Che. It is truly an honor to speak today, and I am humbled by the opportunity. In particular, HM1 Che asked me to speak regarding my experience as a service member from a Hispanic background. To understand the true impact of U.S. Latinos on the history of this country, it is helpful to review some recent data from the Pew Research Center. The U.S. Hispanic population reached 60.6 .6 million in 2019, making 18% of the U.S. population. About 41% of U.S. Hispanic adults, aged 25 and older, had at least some college experience. People of Mexican origin account for slightly over 37 million of the nation's overall Hispanic population. Those of Puerto Rican origin are the next largest group at 5.8 million, with another 3.2 million living on the island. About 80% of Latinos living in the country are U.S. citizens. Hispanics have an impact on the U.S. military in particular. As of June 2018, approximately 59,000 active and reserve sailors of Hispanic heritage serve in the United States Navy. 61 people of Hispanic heritage have been awarded the Medal of Honor. Two were presented to members of the Navy, 13 to members of the U.S. Marine Corps, and 46 members of the U.S. Army. To better understand my journey, it is helpful to consider that of my parents. My mother and father were each born and raised on the island of Puerto Rico. My dad came to the mainland U.S. at the age of 17 during the summer of his junior year in high school. He was at the top of his class during his junior year. His uncle had convinced him to come to the mainland without his family and offered him a room to stay at his house while he finished his senior year in Connecticut. After only two months, he was forced to leave his uncle's house because his uncle was undergoing a divorce. My father then had to pay for a room at the local YMCA while attending high school and working a side job on nights and weekends. My father remembers never entertaining the idea to return to Puerto Rico to finish his school because he had too much pride to admit defeat. Despite working hard to learn English, he can remember being laughed at for his accent. He recounts improving his vocabulary by looking up words he did not know in the dictionary. He was driven by the idea that the schools in Connecticut offered different opportunities that were not available on the island. The University of Connecticut awarded him a full scholarship and he attended a summer program for disadvantaged students. In his sophomore year, he lost his scholarship and it was discovered that he no longer lived at his uncle's house and thus lost his in-state status. He then made ends meet by taking out small loans and grants and working two, two part-time jobs. Later in that sophomore year, he was honored to win the poetry prize for the university, which was amazing given that English was his second language. Eventually, he graduated with a 3.4 GPA. He viewed his success in graduating from college as his fulfillment of achieving the American dream. Later in life, he would put himself through law school at night while working full time during the day and being the father of three kids. My mother was the daughter of a migrant worker who picked fruits and vegetables during the summer and fall seasons. She had seven brothers and sisters and came to the mainland U.S. at age eight. She was the first of her siblings to graduate from college. She was most proud of a fundraising gala that she organized to honor a famous Puerto Rican independence advocate named Ramon Emeterio Betances. She was so proud of how successful the event was and that the money raised could be used to present uh, a mural to a public school in Hartford in honor of Betances. Interestingly enough, Betances was an ophthalmologist who was, who was also known as an abolitionist, diplomat, public health administrator, poet, and novelist. 
Once my brothers and I were grown, my mother attended night classes and earned a master's degree in Spanish, enabling her to become a high school Spanish teacher. I remember my, my, my mother proofreading all of my high school papers for which I'm extremely grateful. My parents' resiliency and love for their children laid the foundation for my Navy career. As a young boy growing up in Connecticut, I finally remember boisterous parties with my uncles, aunts, and cousins. I recall loading my plate with rice and beans, roast pork, also known as lechon, fried plantains, also known as tostones, and my mother's favorite flan. I remember spending a summer with my grandparents in Puerto Rico at the age of five. When I arrived there, I struggled to communicate with my grandmother because she only spoke Spanish. Ironically, at the end of two months, when my parents picked me up, I would only respond to them in Spanish. The principles I learned in my formative years are not unique to the Hispanic culture, but the Navy has offered me the opportunity to succeed, succeed based on my resiliency, determination, and desire to serve this great nation of ours. What I, what I have learned from my cultural influences and my family is that hard work and a desire to better yourself and those around you are rewarded with respect from colleagues and subordinates alike. Over the last 23 years in the Navy, there are five key principles that have served as my foundation. The first of these is develop your subordinates. This, is, this has been especially true over the, last, over the past year at Walter Reed, where I've been fortunate enough to participate in a robust menu of professional development courses that I've shared with my teams. Programs such as the Leadership Challenge, the Deloitte Business Chemistry Model, and Arbiters Part 1 and 2 have provided a blueprint for how to support and develop my staff. The second is identify and cultivate strong relationships with colleagues. For me, I have a strong support group with my fellow facilitators in PCCI, which is a course developed to improve communication skills in healthcare. The relationships I developed at Fort Belvoir and with, within PCCI provided me with the strength to continue in the Navy at a time when I had thought very seriously about leaving after my service commitment had been paid back. The third is to find ways to collaborate with your colleagues. Over the past year, I've been especially appreciative of the out-of-the-box solutions I've developed together with my fellow directors, working collaboratively through the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. Working with subject matter experts from nursing, in addition to medicine and surgery, my colleagues and I have developed and executed a cross-training program, which is a testament to the ingenuity and dedication of all of our staff. The fourth is find inspiration from your immediate family. I've been blessed by the presence of my children and each in their own unique ways they have served to support me. My oldest is Isabella, who, has, who serves as a beacon of love and per, uh, perseverance. I admire her for her ability to tell when others are in need. She has a capacity for empathy beyond her years. Her work with Special Olympics inspires me and I'm so grateful to be her father. Samuel is my middle son, who impresses me with his hard work and determination. His refusal to let adversity define him will serve him well in his future endeavors. Finally, there's Abigail, who is my youngest. Her curiosity and her ability to make new friends inspires me to be, more, uh, to be a more extroverted version of myself. The fifth is be appreciative of the love and support of your spouse. I could not have made it this far without the love of my wife, Melanie, for the past 17 years. It is little things that I'm thankful for, including laughing on car rides and binge watching Netflix on the weekends. She has put her dental practice to the side for the next couple of months to serve as our children's IT support uh, through the virtual learning adventure. She is gracious with her selfless love and support, and I couldn't have made it to today without her. In closing, I hope the words I have shared with you today help you gain some understanding of the contribution this Hispanic culture has provided to the vibrant cloth of this great nation. It is only by celebrating our diversity that we will begin to be able to recognize a strength that will enable us to conquer our future challenges. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you, and I'm truly honored to serve with and for you. Thank you, Captain Acosta. At this time, I would like to take a look at these slides shading light on the few decorated Hispanic service members who have served this nation in the past, an overview of what America, of Hispanic Americans ethnic ethnicity is about. To be Hispanic means to be brought together through a language and celebrating what makes you and your community unique. What makes us unique stems from our culture, our language, our music, our dances, and much more. A few decorated Hispanic military members. Admiral David Fraga was a Hispanic American and the first person to achieve the rank of Admiral. Admiral Fraga's father was a native of Spain. He served in the American Navy from 1810 to 1870. His legacy lives on with two Navy destroyers in the name as 
we know, and then also the Frogaw Square, Washington, D.C. monument. Mick Pond, Joe Campos, first Hispanic American to raise the ma to Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, the highest enlisted position in the Navy. A hospital corpsman with a combat action ribbon, Mick Pond Joe is best remembered today for reorienting the mess to embrace deck plate leadership. More directly, also um, mentoring the sailor to make sure they become technical experts. Admiral Christina Admiral, Rear Admiral Admiral, was a registered nurse who retired after serving a Deputy Chief Bumed Reserve Policy and Integration. She was the first nurse to command Naval uh, Reserve Expeditionary Medical Facilities Dallas 1, the first nurse of Hispanic heritage to be selected to the rank of Rear Admiral in the Nurse Corps, and the first Hispanic female to achieve Rear Admiral Upper Half. Secretary Edward Hidalgo. Secretary Hidalgo was a Hispanic immigrant from Mexico who served as the United States Secretary of the Navy in the Carter administration from October 24, 1979 to January 20, 1981. During World War II, he was a lieutenant of the U.S. Reserves from 1942 to 1943. He served in the Montevideo, Uruguay as a legal advisor and ambassador to the emergency advisor for political defense. Sergeant First Class Augustine Ramos Caledo. Sergeant First Class Caledo was an immigrant from Puerto Rico. He served in the Army during World War II and was awarded 22 decorations and medals, this becoming the most decorated Puerto Rican and Hispanic soldier in the United States military during that war. Sergeant Rafael Peralta was a Me Mexican Boer immigrant who served in the Marine Corps vigilantly through the second invasion of Fallujah in Iraq and ultimately gave his life to protect his fellow Marines by absorbing a blast of a grenade. He later received the Navy Cross and Purple Heart in addition to the Navy christened, Navy christened a destroyer in honor of U USS Rafael Peralta DDG-115. Ships honoring Hispanic Americans. USS Santiago de Cuba was commissioned in New York in 1986 during the American Civil War and one of the first ships to be named after a Hispanic country. First Lieutenant Lopez, TK-310, named after First Lieutenant Lopez who received the Medal of Honor for his heroic action during Korean War in 1950. Cesar Chavez, named after a lab labor leader, civil rights activist that served in the Navy during World War II. DDG-99 Frogger, named after Admiral Frogger, who became the first person to the rear admiral ranks and of Hispanic roots. DDG Gonzalez, named after the Marine Corps Sergeant Alfredo Gonzalez, who received the first Medal of Honor for service of battle during the Vietnam War. And DDG-1115 Peralta, named after the Marine Corps Sergeant Rafael Peralta, who received Navy Cross for his for his service during the Second Battle of Fallujah in Iraq. We all know that Hispanics are known for their love of music. It comes to no surprise that Hispanics are known for their love of music and, and many genres. Every region and country makes the, that their own, using specific instruments and rhythms, instruments like maracas, tambores, guayos, and much more. Dancing. You can't have music without dancing. In the Hispanic community, dancing is derived from its indigenous natives, African and European roots. Expressing through their heritage, cultures through the art of dancing, for every genre of music, there's a style of dancing. You have the salsa dancing, merengue, samba, flamenco, and much more. Hispanic attire. Regional differences are made most obvious through the color choices and linen type. Caribbean Hispanics usually use red, white, and blue, displaying uh, their colors through their flags. Um, usually, red, white, and blue dresses, skirts, uh, headpieces, and white linen clothing due to the very hot weather. 
South Americans, and Central Americans, traditionally, traditional tires stem from their indigenous ancestors and display an, display an array of multicolored floral dresses, skirts, and men mostly sport white linen also. I'm displaying some pictures. Traditional celebrations. Most Hispanics celebrate many, many different celebrations, but these are the two most common celebrations. Quinceañeras, which celebrates the coming of womanhood of females, usually celebrated at the, at the child's 15th birthday, is usually celebrated by a big party and a, with a huge ball gown, honors and cherishes the special day of a young woman's life. Also, we have Carnavales, most popular event in the Hispanic culture. Celebrations held before Lent, the period leading up to Easter, fasting period. In other words, the last chance to party and eat. Carnival is celebrated with a massive parade, music, dancers, and food. Costume dem demonstrates the local native roots and multicolored and decorative clothing. Food expresses the passion and love for one another through food. All gatherings and events are always accompanied and surrounded by food. Although each country has their own style of cooking, rice and beans is a must. Hispanics um, share their love of each other through the food and through, and these are some of the most common foods, um, like Captain Acosta mentioned some flan and rice and beans and lechon. Adios, hasta luego, chao, y nos vemos. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our next speaker on stage, Major Edwin Gandia, Chief of Molecular Pathology and Deputy Director of BioBank. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, first, I want to thank the Multicultural uh, Committee for the opportunity to be a speaker uh, during this event where we celebrate the National Hispanic Heritage Month. It is with great honor that I stand here in front of you uh, today. We have convened to celebrate the contributions of Hispanics in the United States Armed Forces. We will do so uh, by not only describing the contributions of past and present generations of Hispanic service members, but by also sharing with you my experiences. Through the years, I have come to believe that we need to know our history so we can evaluate ourselves in the present while looking forward into the future. If we go back to 1779, while Puerto Rico was still under Spanish rule, Puerto Ricans fought alongside the American colonists in the Revolutionary War. Bernardo de Galvez, the governor of Louisiana at the time, was named general of the Spanish colonial army and led his troops, which were mostly Puerto Ricans and other Hispanics, um, to uh, fight and capture colonial army uh, cities of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola, Florida, and St. Louis, Missouri from the British. More than 80 years later, by the end of the Civil War, more than 20,000 Hispanics had participated in the conflict. A Puerto Rican immigrant, Lieutenant Augusto Rodriguez, served the 15th Connecticut Regiment. He protected the Union capital in the defenses of Washington, D.C., and courageously led his men in battle at Fredericksburg. After the acquisition of Puerto Rico in 1898, following the Hispanic-American War, as citizens of the United States, Puerto Ricans have participated in every major United States military engagement from World War I onward. Today, as of 2020, although the Hispanic representation in active duty is growing, we still make a small fraction of not only total military service members, but also conform only a small percentage of high-ranking posts. It is estimated that Hispanics make 16% of the total active duty members, 14% of the senior enlisted, 12% of warrant officers, 8% of all officers, and only 2% of general flag officers and above. But let me tell you that Hispanics have been characterized by representing the best of the army, by always placing the mission first, by never accepting defeat, by never quitting, by never leaving a fallen soldier behind, by being disciplined, by being always ready, and by being a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. As a child, I used to dream to be a soldier, but when I was growing up and went off to college, I didn't have a clue 
that 16 years later, I was going to be part of the greatest military force in the world. Today, my purpose is to present to you my experience during the last 11 years by sharing certain details that, as a Puerto Rican, I had to go through. Circumstances that sometimes we don't want to talk about, but are good to share with, so we can be vigilant and intervene appropriately. My military career started back in 2009 in Augusta, Georgia, where I started an internal medicine internship at Dwight D. Eisenhower Army Medical Center. Now, like in every other organization, there are circumstances where we fail to recognize certain issues embedded deep within our, our, our own personal beliefs. During that grueling year of long hours and several 30-hour shifts a week, as if that wasn't enough, I had to deal with prejudice. A staff member would make inappropriate comments regarding my Puerto Rican accent in front of the team. As a young captain, I felt humiliated, disappointed, and upset. I brought this issue to my chain of command, and instead of finding the support that I needed and a solution to this unfortunate circumstance, my senior ranking officer tried to dismiss the situation with the notion that this was a staff member uh, personality. Nothing was done, and I decided not to pursue any further actions. The disappointment did not deter me from continuing to succeed and continue my training so I could strive and be successful. I do recognize that for some of us, this could have been an experience that could have had a negative impact in anyone's career. I would encourage, although I didn't follow this uh, steps, but I would encourage anyone you know, that got through similar situations to use the tools and processes at your disposal to correct the issue through the sharing command. For me, everything worked out. Uh, the best part is that in the last 10 years, I have not encountered any other similar situation, and my career has been what I expected to be within the Army. This kid from Carolina, Puerto Rico, uh, became a board-certified pathologist, board-certified um, molecular pathologist. Uh, I'm promoting to Lieutenant Colonel next year, June 23rd, 2021, and one of the most important things, become a staff member in the finest military medical institution in DHA. I believe that the Department of Defense has implemented multiple regulations and put in place safeguards across the board that deal with this type of issues, both to prevent them from happening as well as the ability to recognize them and intervene appropriately. A lot has been done, and although there is still some work to do, if each one of us participate actively in the development of equality initiatives, our future would be brighter and the military force will be stronger. As the Hispanic representation within the armed forces grow, it is our duty as leaders to listen and recognize these type of issues where the morale of our troops could be compromised. We need to be able to act and preserve unity. We need to reflect the best of our country. We need to be the light in the darkness. We need to see ourselves as the standard to which our society will look up to and strive to become our better selves. We need to understand and most importantly, believe that diversity is one of our strongest attributes where people from different backgrounds unite to work for the common good. For more than 240 years, Hispanics have fought alongside the American troops, defended the Constitution and the people of the United States. This is our most sacred oath and one, and one that we will continue to defend and honor for generations to come. To finish, let me share with you just a couple of lines that I think captures the importance of Hispanics in our country from the multiple Tony Award winner Broadway musical, Hamilton. A verse from the song, The Battle of Yorktown, reads as follows. Monsieur Hamilton, Monsieur Lafayette, in command where you belong, how you say no sweat, we're finally on the field, we've had quite a run, immigrants, we get the job done. Thank you. Thank you, Major Gandia. At this time, I would like to invite Command Master Chief Swanson to give our closing remarks. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking time out of your day to observe National Hispanic Heritage Month with us. I would like to thank Captain Acosta and Major Promotable Gandia for speaking and sharing with us today. This month recognizes and celebrates the contributions of more than 60 million Hispanic Americans and the impact they've had to our culture, our military, and our country. Hispanic Americans currently make up the largest minority group in the United States 
and generations of Hispanic Americans have continued to help make and keep our country resilient and thriving. Our nation is built on diversity and strength of character. Hispanic Americans helped drive our nation forward during this month and we honor their contributions throughout our history. Again, thank you all for coming. Please enjoy your day and the rest of National Hispanic Heritage Month, one team. Eterno Dios, Almighty God, value all people because your love value this world. And today, we took a time to celebrate the Hispanic Heritage Month. We thank you for the gift of our Hispanic and Latino brothers and sisters. Enable us always to learn from and appreciate each other. Make us even stronger as one nation and as a hospital, O oh Lord. Because of our diverse gift and experiences, we grow. Grant that we continue to be a place with open doors, open hearts, making room for all. May we be granted and enjoy generous hearts that we may continue to use our gift to support one another. Concédenos tu amor, compasión, y gracia hoy al emprender y cultivar una unidad compartida. May we be granted your love, compassion, and grace today as we embrace and nurture our shared unity. Amen. On behalf of Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, Director Colonel Barr, Multicultural Committee, and our audience, I would like to personally thank you for attending our celebration. Each of you have made a difference today in educating our Walter Reed team and the contributions of, American, of Hispanic Americans to our nation and to the command. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you and have a wonderful day.